everyone uh, this uh, video is going to talk about migrating a SQL server always on configuration that's on physical hardware uh, to the virtualized environment on Nutanix and how ERA is going to help along the way with the migration uh, so pretty much uh, the video demonstrates how you can do an end-to-end uh, uh, migration of your database workloads uh, with always on enabled to a virtualized environment and how ERA pretty much plays a key role in that migration. So <clears throat> as part of this demonstration let me show my physical configuration. So I have basically uh, an existing uh, 3 node AG that is actually on physical hardware. So the idea here is to add another node to the existing AAG and this uh, new node is going to reside on the Nutanix platform. Once uh, the new node uh, is registered on the Nutanix platform, we basically will use error to register that database server uh, uh, so that um, your data protection needs are also met by snapshot technology from an error perspective. Right. To do that, uh, let me, so there are certain prerequisites that uh, need to be met. Uh, one of the key prerequisites is the new node that is going to be added to this always on configuration should also be at, uh, associated with the Windows failover cluster. So to do that, uh, I basically will go into the new node which is the 163 IP here and add, using the Windows uh, add roles and features, I'm going to enable or I'm going to uh, install the uh, Windows failover cluster on this new node. Um, so this is pretty much the process for it. You enable the failover cluster here, you add the features here. Um, and once you add the features, you basically need to add the new node to the existing Windows failover cluster. So this installation would ideally take uh, uh, a few minutes. Uh, so so the, the process is pretty simple. Um, you create the new Windows machine and now to create, so since this feature installation is still running, I'm also going to talk about how ERA is used in this migration process itself, right? Uh, so, so so this is the ERI UI and if I go to the new sources, what I have done is as part of adding this new node, you basically would have to create or provision a new single instance SQL server. In a typical environment, uh, every organization today ideally takes close to four to seven days to provision a DB server. So what I have done here is basically a provisioned a DB server. Uh, <coughs> named MIG AG node 3 and uh, this is this provision was ideally done through error uh, and if you look at here the time it ideally has taken to provision this new MIG AG node 3 server is around 17 minutes. So, uh, so in a matter of few minutes a database uh, uh, server has been provisioned and this is the server that I am currently uh, installing the Windows failover cluster on. So, so if, if you look at it, uh, the, the, the time that have uh, uh, gained by provisioning this database server using error uh, is pretty much uh, uh, around 20 minutes as, as compared to around 3 or 4 days in a normal uh, uh, scenario uh, where, where a lot of groups are involved. Right? So, so that's how the database server was provisioned. Uh, so once the Windows uh, failover clusters manager is installed on, on this new uh, node or the new provision DB server, I'm going to attach that node to the existing cluster itself. Uh, so this might take a couple of minutes to complete. Uh, once that's done, we'll attach it to the Windows failover cluster. And once that step is done, then we will start uh, associating that node to the existing AAG itself. So if you see here the installation is successful so um, I can close this window out and then I will ideally open the failover cluster manager. Uh, let me just cancel it here. Let me just go back to the desktop. 
and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the primary node of that AG uh, which is pretty much the if you see here this is the primary node of the AG where I already have the Windows failover cluster manager open. Now if you see here I have three nodes that are on physical I right click on it and I say add node and basically I am going to add the new node that I just uh, had the uh, Windows failover cluster software installed on it. So, I am going to put the IP here, I am just going to say add, it is uh, ideally searching for the server and it actually figured out what the server name is, right. So, I am going to select that, I am going to say next, uh, just, uh, just does a pre-validation check, uh, so you can just accept all of that, right, run all the recommended tests and say next if you want some cluster disk, quorum disk to be also validated, do that, click next and then and then click next to run the uh, all the validation. So, pretty much uh, the validation is a step uh, that basically helps you to make sure that all the prerequisites that are required for, for the Windows failure cluster are met, right, um, for adding a new node. So, if you look at here, you will see the progress of all the validation tests that are running. So, it might take close to uh, two to two, three minutes to complete these validations. So, once the validations are done, I am all set to actually add this new node uh, to the secondary to the uh, existing Gnode AG itself. Um, so, let us wait for this to complete uh, probably uh, another another three to four minutes for it to get done. Uh, <coughs> uh, so, I'm just going to pause here until this is done uh, and then resume uh, my conversation itself. So, if you see here, so ideally all the tests have passed and I could and I could just say finish here uh, and then I am just going to say next to add the new node to the existing uh, Windows failover cluster. So, so the nodes have been added here, so I will say finish. If you see here, my new node has already been added to the existing uh, Windows failover cluster. So, since this new node is now available, what I am going to do is add this new node to my uh, existing always on configuration. So, I will probably go back here to my SQL server. So, if I see here on the always on availability group, I do have um, uh, three nodes here. So, all that I need to do is add um, the fourth node to this uh, existing AG. So, however, to do that, uh, one prerequisite that I also need to do is enable always on availability, uh, uh, always on availability on the fourth node. So, for that, uh, what I am going to do is I will remote login to the fourth node uh, and then I am going to open the SQL Server Configuration Manager. SQL Server Configuration Manager, 
<clears throat> and enable the always on feature there. So go into SQL Server Services. I'm going to right click on the existing uh, the properties of the server itself. Go to always on availability group. Uh, and then uh, they say click on this and they say apply and then say OK here, right? So by that way, my always on is enabled on the new node. And then I'm going to go back to my to my primary uh, node of the AG. And then <clears throat> I'm going to say right click on the availability group and say add replica, right? And then I'll say next. So this is asking me to connect to all the uh, asking me to connect to all the secondary nodes right so I'll say connect here uh, I'll say connect uh, and then I'll say connect here I'll say, so I'm successfully connected to both the nodes of the AG I'll say next here then here I'm going to say add the new node right once I say this this drop down here should ideally uh, show me all the ones that are available uh, so I'll just say browse for more Let's say uh, database engine, I'll say network servers. So it's going to retrieve me all the available network servers. And in this list, I should be able to see my uh, new node uh, that I had installed the Windows failover cluster on. So this might take a few seconds for retrieving the list of servers that's available on the network. So um, just let's wait for it to be displayed here. <coughs> So it's displayed now. So under this list, I have this MIG node, the one node that I was looking for where the cluster software was just installed. I'll say OK here, and then I'll just do a connection from here. OK, if you see here, it's saying always on feature is not enabled on the SQL Server instance. The reason is even though I had installed uh, the enable the always on configuration, uh, the error is because the SQL Server Services was not restarted here. So I'm going to restart the SQL Server Services. Uh, once that's done, I'll go back to my uh, I'll go back to my uh, uh, primary node, which is this, right? And I'll say connect again. So it's now connected here. So it's saying it's a secondary node. It's not readable. Right, um, and then <clears throat> I could define it as any number of primary or secondary nodes, and then I'll say next here. I I need to provide a shared path where the backups uh, uh, can reside. So on the primary server, I've created the shared path that's accessible to all the nodes of the AAG. Right, that's one prerequisite as well. You click next here. It's doing some pre-validations to make sure uh, the, the AGs is in a good health. So if you see everything is a success here, I'll say next and then I'll say finish. And then this basically adds the new node to the all existing always on configuration. So that way, uh, what I've successfully achieved is uh, created a secondary replica on the, on the Nutanix uh, uh, platform itself. Right. If you see here, I have this new node added here. So using this new node, uh, you can actually go and register that database server to ERA itself. So, so the, the process for that is you go into uh, <clears throat> go to the ERA dashboard, uh, you go to your sources, and then you say register. It's a single node database server. It's a SQL Server instance. You say next, um, and then in the drop down, uh, uh, you, uh, if you See, you should be able to see that uh, VM itself. Uh, it's, it's registered here. So click on that. That's the database server that I want to register. You click Next. Um, and then it will ideally discover the database on, this, on that new node. Once it discovers the database, select that particular database that you want to register, uh, and, then, uh, and then run the process of registration. That's the database I wanted to register. I'll say Next here. It's discovering the recovery model of the database, uh, which is ideally it's going to be a full recovery model, and then define your SLAs, right? You could say brass bronze. I'll say bra bronze here, so that I have one snapshots per day, uh, and then my log catchups run for every uh, 30 minutes. Uh, that's the frequency of the schedule that I uh, I'll set, and 
a lot of backups are going to be managed by error. If you want other applications, you, you are very well can do that. But in this case, I'm going to let error manage my ba backups and then I'll say register. So, uh, so with this, uh, basically, uh, uh, what, what it ideally does is it registers the database server. Uh, so if you see here, you go back in here <coughs> and then uh, so basically you will see that source database in here go, go to the error dashboard you have that ag migrdb registered so so this way you also achieve uh, the data protection needs for your organization by using error so pretty much era is used as a provisioning uh, mechanism and also uh, and uh, make sure your uh, data protection needs are met by registering that uh, that secondary AG node uh, onto error. So this way, um, you you run your you run your production workloads uh, uh, till the day of cutover, right? Uh, where this node is still going to be the going to be the secondary node. On the day of the cutover, all that you have to do is basically uh, uh, failover. Uh, <clears throat> you basically do a, a failover of your primary to the Nutanix uh, cluster. So in this case, I want to failover uh, to this node, uh, but it does give me a data loss warning just because of the fact that I had set my availability mode as asynchronous mode. You can always go back and change it to synchronous mode and then do a failover. So. Uh, not synchronized uh, so it basically it's still in the process of doing a synchronize here click here to confirm there's a potential data loss that's still fine I want to make sure I'm still caught up right so and then you say next you do a connection here Windows authentication <coughs> say next and you say finish here so basically the failover actually happens on to my uh, a new node that I that is actually running on Nutanix cluster so that way um, and there is very little downtime and uh, uh, so if you see here it's a success so, and if you go back to the availability replicas here uh, so the primary uh, uh, refresh that and then if you see here so basically your if you see here this this node is is your primary let me just uh, connect to this instance and show you here and then you go to always on availability group availability groups here this and then if you see here the new node that's on the Nutanix cluster has become the primary and then as as days progress what you can actually do is you can go ahead and uh, remove the secondary nodes uh, from your physical uh, infrastructure and then you can actually add more nodes on the Nutanix cluster as secondary nodes itself. The process is still the same for, for that as well. Uh, the entire process that I just sh uh, showed here can also be um, automated end to end using PowerShell because there's a lot of uh, commandlets within PowerShell that lets you create uh, a Windows failover cluster that lets you add a new node to the existing Windows failover cluster. Uh, commandlets to create uh, uh, or add a replica to an existing Windows failover cluster to an existing AAG. So this end-to-end -end can be uh, run in an automated fashion, where you might have a lot of databases to be to be migrated in this fashion. Uh, hope uh, this demo was useful and uh, and uh, helped you to understand more in terms of how you can migrate uh, from physical infrastructure to uh, to the Nutanix platform and how. Era basically plays a key role in that. Right? Uh, thank you.